A crypto is a living creature. We've, we've released life in cyberspace. And Bitcoin, you could think of as a plant life or a plankton. It's a base level life. It's, it's not the most complicated creature. Is the Bitcoin is still the number one gold in cryptocurrencies and institutions want to allocate three to five percent in, but can't yet. And on the other side of this coin is the volatility giving you huge opportunities with decentralized finance. Yeah. The fundamental difference, I think, with a crypto asset like Bitcoin versus what other people are trying to do in their spaces is, is the whole idea of a crypto asset is I put my, my monetary energy, my life force into it. Also, only a tiny percentage of my viewers are actually subscribed. If you enjoy the video, consider subscribing. It's free and you can always change your mind. Enjoy the video. And, and I've never seen a critic say, I hate Bitcoin. I think that people in the rest of the world should buy, no one says they should buy Apple stock to save their life savings in Africa to avoid having it be stolen by the local government. Nobody says that. So if you don't give a constructive solution to the problem, then you're just reflexively rejecting a new thing. Are you uh, essentially a corporate heretic? And what I mean by that is in corporate CEO suites, they borrow money and they buy back their own stock and their executive options go up a lot in value and they cash out. You looked at this situation, you said, oh, the ice cube on my balance sheet's melting. I'm going to buy Bitcoin. I'm even going to borrow money to buy Bitcoin. It seems almost like a speculative attack on the central bank itself. Is that a fair characterization? Uh, what are your comments? I think for a decade, conventional treasury strategy was I buy short dated treasuries and in order to get my stock up, I buy back my equity and leverage up my cash flows. I, I watched 99 out of 100 of my competitors all go out of business pursuing that strategy. What they do is they either buy, they do a dilutive acquisition where they buy another company and they keep bolting on acquisitions until they've got 37 companies and it all falls apart. And then they sell themselves or take themselves private or they keep buying their stock back and leveraging up. And, uh, and one way is decapitalizing the company. The other way is diluting the company. Uh, when, what I was doing with Bitcoin was I was saying, I don't want to decapitalize the company. I want to keep the capital or grow the capital, but, but I want to put an asset on the balance sheet. And I think a big breakthrough is I can convert my cash from a liability to an asset. And then we realize that if that asset's going to go up by more than 10% a year, and you can borrow money at 5% or 4 or 3 or 2, then you should pretty much borrow as much money as you can and flip it into the asset. And why wouldn't you? Oh, right. But it, it does kind of call time on this ultra low interest rate policies by the central banks that seem to be there only to benefit a few select at the top uh, while disenfranchising the many. And if all corporations did what you guys are doing, it would seem to disrupt the central banks, which in fact would then help Bitcoin. Is there a virtuous cycle here? Should central banks take a more politicized stance and do this for that reason as a way to get rid of possibly the greatest threat we have, and that is the central banks? And I'm tacitly having you agree with this thought, quite unfairly, with this question. Uh, however, I think you see what I'm, I'm driving at. Is there a political angle to this at all? Are, are you allowed to say that? I think we can all go forward constructively together. <laughs> and look, Ray Dalio says he'd rather own Bitcoin than a bond. There's a hundred trillion in bonds. That was a big statement that he made just a week ago. Right. Corporate treasuries are holding bonds. As people rotate bonds and cash into Bitcoin, price discovery will return to bonds, and that means that you can buy an annuity for a fair price, and that's good for the world. It would be good to be able to buy a bond that had a good annuity stream. I think that price discovery will return to stocks, and you'll be able to buy a stock that pays a decent dividend that's less risky, and that will be good for the world. I think that you'll be able to buy, if we, if we're able, if we demonetize residential real estate, you'll be able to buy a house at half the price that's twice as good. That'll be good to the world. 
And so I think that the virtuous cycle is Bitcoin is demonetizing gold. Your jewelry will be twice as good, half as expensive. Is demonetizing real estate. Your house will be twice as big, half as expensive. Is demonetizing debt. You will be able to buy an annuity that yields 8% interest with no risk. Is demonetizing equity and ETFs. You'll be able to invest in a company and not pay 50 times revenue and take a risk. You'll be able to invest reasonably. And so Bitcoin fixes everything. And, and it fixes... Yeah. And, and if you wish me to make a political statement, the political statement would be, it fixes governments because as it fixes everything else, governments act rationally. And right now, you can see governments acting rationally, right? In weak countries, their currency collapses to zero, and they have to adopt a new currency. Right now, they're adopting the dollar. I see a world where 8 billion people have a mobile device, and they have a digital wallet, and they have a, current, a digital currency like a dollar or a euro, and then they have a digital asset, Bitcoin. And Bitcoin links together 8 billion people, links together 100 million companies. It synchronizes the world across political jurisdiction, and it returns rationality to the entire financial system, and it returns freedom and property rights to the human race. That, um, on occasions, it's very interesting. Um, you, you seem to allude to or refer to Bitcoin as something of a new life form and sometimes you refer to it evolving uh, you say nothing can compete with Bitcoin as money unless it's a unique beautiful creature that does something unique uh, it's like a uh, plankton or a lobster uh, you refer to uh, one of the shit coins out there ethereum as a shark duck that lives in trees <laughs> right so you you use these life affirming metaphors quite often and but the idea is it a the reason I bring this up is because the difficulty adjustment, the way it acts, seems like it's alive in a lot of ways. So what, what, what are your thoughts on this? I think that uh, a crypto is a living creature. We've, we've released life in cyberspace. And, and Bitcoin, you could think of it as a plant life or a plankton. It's a base level life. It's, it's not the most complicated creature. It's not... You could think of it, some of the other DeFi's, they want to be animals and run around, and Bitcoin wants to be green, greenery and, and cover the entire earth. Once you've released the DNA of the, of the Bitcoin, you just have to let it fester everywhere in the world and let it be it. I think the beautiful thing about Bitcoin is it's done. There's no reason why it can't become a hundred trillion, two hundred, three hundred trillion dollar creature. And uh, I, I, the fundamental difference, I think, with a crypto asset like Bitcoin versus what other people are trying to do in this space is, is the whole idea of a crypto asset is I put my, my monetary energy, my life force into it, and then I let it, I let it live for the next thousand years. And it's okay just to be alive for a thousand years. It's okay to be, you know, what's wrong with being rich forever, right? I mean... <laughs> And, that, and that's what Bitcoin is. And then all of the innovation will take place at the layer two. I think, it's, I think when uh, Square builds Bitcoin, when PayPal builds Bitcoin into its layer two, as people build lightning applications into their ap applications on the layer two, I think they're doing all the beautiful, intricate, functional, high performance things. And they take the risk, they have the upside, but we don't impair the underlying base layer, the life force of the world is Bitcoin. We just got to let it be and respect it for what it is and not mess with it. Now, so let me ask you this. So you are, I believe, the longest sitting CEO of a tech company in America. Uh, active CEO, continuous, going 20 years. And you've been around the block a few times, you know the industry, and this is like a second life for you, I would say. This is, was, this, was it a shock to suddenly come upon this technology and really there's been a rebirth for MicroStrategy and for, for this industry? How do you, on, on a personal level, 
Was that a surprise to you, and how did you react to that? You know, I mean, they say Bitcoin. We say Bitcoin is hope, and Bitcoin fixes everything. I, I think it definitely, I definitely was the case with our company. I mean, our stock was at ninety dollars a share. We were at one, we were at one hundred and twenty dollars a share when we actually decided to embark on this strategy.